Yellowstone, America's first national park and home to one of the world's largest super volcanoes. Beneath the scenic geysers and waterfalls, an eruption a thousand times larger than any in human history awaits. It's happened before. Less than a million years ago, it devastated more than half the continent, and it could happen again. There will definitely be additional eruptions in this area. And not just one, but a series of monstrous eruptions a million times more powerful than an atomic bomb. It's absolutely devastating. Everything would be killed. Destroying thousands of square miles of land and countless lives across the Northwest. It'll just be over. It'll be toast. It'll be finished. We go beneath the Earth to probe the volcano, reveal for the first time the source of its power, to discover what will happen when the sleeping giant of Yellowstone awakens and becomes a mega disaster. The dance of geysers is one of nature's greatest spectacles. It's why millions of visitors each year come to America's oldest national park, Yellowstone. Its spectacular beauty inspired President Ulysses S. Grant to protect these two million acres of northern Wyoming wilderness back in 1872, and it's been a haven for outdoor enthusiasts ever since. Its incredible hot springs, bubbling pools of mud, unearthly ponds, and the most celebrated natural feature, the Old Faithful Geyser, are some of nature's greatest wonders. But beneath this primal beauty simmers a hidden threat. Five miles below the waterfalls and mountain peaks lies the heart of a super volcano, a constantly moving cauldron of molten rock the size of Mount Everest. Over countless millions of years, it fills with lava to the breaking point. Like a bomb with a hidden timer, it finally explodes. We don't know how long it's going to just sit there before it decides to go off. If sometime in the future it were to erupt, as it has before, the Yellowstone volcano would overwhelm everything within 100 miles and disrupt lives across the globe for years. The first sign of trouble will be increasing seismic activity. The ground would rise as pressure from the molten rock begins to grow. There would be a lot of ground deformation, and then if it was moving up slowly enough, we would actually start seeing large changes in the geyser basins. Finally, the lava would shatter the Earth's surface with an explosion 10 times larger than Mount St. Helens. A hurricane of hot gases would spread out in all directions as the ash cloud reaches 80,000 feet into the air. Already larger than anything man has experienced, this would be just the beginning of a Yellowstone super eruption. Within days, a second enormous eruption would begin, then another. Soon, a ring of monstrous explosions 50 miles wide would be spewing molten rock and burning gases across the landscape. Certainly, within, within 100 miles of Yellowstone, there wouldn't be much that was not destroyed. High in the atmosphere, the ash cloud would surround the planet, sending temperatures plunging. Global agriculture would fall into chaos. How do we know it will happen? Because it's happened before. The evidence is etched into the geologic record of past supervolcanoes. There are 1,500 volcanoes around the world. But there are fewer than 10 supervolcanoes, the ones with the potential to not only destroy the surrounding area, but to create a global disaster. And Yellowstone is one of these supervolcanoes. Imagine something 10,000 times the size of Mount St. Helens. It's almost unimaginable. Unlike a conventional volcano with its crater atop a mountain, Yellowstone's crater is so large it can only be seen from the air. 
This is the rim of a monstrous crater called a caldera that collapsed into the magma chamber during the last super eruption. It's large enough to hold the city of Los Angeles. People drive 35 miles, 45 miles, commuting to work in that. Well, that's the distance across this caldera. And this is only the last of three monstrous calderas formed over the past two million years. The volcanic history of Yellowstone is really marked by these three giant cataclysmic eruptions of the scale that we haven't seen in, you know, history of man, really. The first eruption vented somewhere around 600 cubic miles of material. And if you took all of that and you spread it out over the state of Texas, you'd have about 12 feet thick of deposits. The second eruption was hundreds of times larger than Mount St. Helens, and it's the smallest of the Yellowstone super eruptions. The most recent one, known as the Lava Creek eruption, occurred 640,000 years ago. At the time, early man had yet to arrive on the scene. Exotic prehistoric animals roamed the North American continent. Five miles beneath the Earth, however, a magmatic cauldron three times the size of New York City was coming to a boil. There would have been hundreds to thousands of earthquakes uh, becoming fairly large, so there'd be a lot of shaking as the hot rock was moving up. A million tons of molten rock heated to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit pressed its way to the surface. Jets of superheated water suddenly burst through the cracks in the Earth's surface, shooting into the air. Hundreds of geysers were erupting over 500 square miles. We get explosions out of the hydrothermal system that put holes in the ground as big as a mile across. So they're big events. But this was just the overture before the main event. After days of increasing earthquake and geyser activity, under mounting pressure from magma and superheated gases, Yellowstone's last super eruption began. The material may have started to leak out of one side perhaps forming part of the edge of the fracture zone. As you start to decrease the pressure, it starts to then explode. With the power of a hydrogen bomb, a monstrous cloud of searing ash and melted rock shot into the stratosphere. 